The young soldiers were meant to be celebrating their graduation. Instead, their coffins are being taken to the cemetery. This was the large crowd attending the ceremony at an army academy in the city of Homs, shortly before a drone struck. And these were the moments immediately after. At least 100 people died in one of the deadliest single attacks ever on the Syrian regime's forces. The defence minister was at the funerals today. He had left the ceremony shortly before the explosions began. The pace of Syria's bloody conflict has slowed over the years, and this was an attack no one expected. Families of the dead left distraught. <laughs> I just want to say goodbye to my brother, this man cries. The drone strike took place in Homs, in the heart of territory controlled by President Bashar al-Assad. Other parts of Syria are held by Kurdish forces, backed by America, and in a de facto truce with the regime. Rebels opposed to Assad remain in a patch of the northwest, but they've never carried out a drone strike of this scale before. There's never really been an attack like this in such a facility, uh, allegedly from some kind of kamikaze drone, in the whole uh, you know 12 years of the Syrian crisis. So this is a real standout incident. There's lots of sort of mysterious elements to it, very unclear as to who was responsible. The Syrian regime has been pounding rebel-held areas in Idlib province in retaliation. Residents repeatedly targeted in airstrikes, once again coming under fire. Funerals have been taking place here too. This one for an eight-year-old girl called Layla. My darling, my soul, her father calls out. Violence has also been flaring elsewhere in Syria. The Turkish military attacking Kurdish positions following a suicide bombing in Ankara last weekend. Turkey blaming them for harbouring the militants responsible. Adding to the complexity, US forces in the area shot down a Turkish drone though they've downplayed the incident. More than a decade after Syria's conflict began, the man responsible for the vast majority of deaths, Bashar al-Assad, is returning to the international stage, accepted back into the Arab League earlier this year. But with the country's economy in tatters, he's faced large, renewed protests in areas considered his stronghold and desperate Syrians continue to flee abroad. The response to this deadly attack on Assad's forces will be coloured by the pressure his regime still faces.